born into nothing more than the photographs that very often you see now on the net. Have you seen them? You haven't seen them. No, no, it's not Mussolini in the theatre. This is the picture of Heinrich Himmler, the one of the chiefs, if not the chief, of the SS, the staff, driving are. the equivalent of the 1934 or 1927 or 1924, you know English what kind of Austin 7. Now, when you look at the way of a society that we have come by, we don't talk about the proletariat. We let us I talk about we are talking know. about today. We're talking about What is this rabble of a men you call soldiers? What are these proletariat monsters of military who call themselves the corpus? Who call themselves the corpus? Of how they are elected to fight as a general. Eventually, Henry VIII, as king in 1509, after they had persecuted the Lancastrians, um, they had annihilated York, hadn't they, really? <laughs> and and you, you only have to you only have to go to Brighton. You only have to be a Brighton fanatic to realise what what the wealth of the immortality is of the mobs and the rockers. My friend, you call yourself you call yourself a party. You call yourself you call yourself the the the, the, the head tribe. Let's say your name is Red Indian Fred. Red Indian Fred 
How do you manage to stand on those high hills? I, I honestly, you have my utter sympathy, my dear. I do not understand how, how, um, a, how, how a proletariat uh, e e existentialist ship, uh, which is called um, the palace uh, that, that, that was, uh, of uh, in uh, Whitehall, White Halls of Heaven, that these White Halls of Heaven had once seen the renegade who was, to some extent, the halls of the great Henry VIII, were they? Oh, yes, we can hear all about that, yes. We can read all that, or can't we, on the net? Yes, you can go and read on the net, and you can read about what they did to the General Blucher. General Larry Combrera. Yes, you can read it all. And all its horrible, sorry plight. And a sudden wretched mud of Waterloo. And a wretched mud of the Somme. On the 1st of July 1916, you can read it all. I am up to here in water. Water. Fishermen's daughters, and you elect to represent Scotland, do you, as a free country? You have to be severely Joseph Stalin, Miss Joseph Stalin. And who do we have here? We have here Henry. Henry V praising, praising the democratic will of the unleashed soldier that like this Fergus, rearing its left leg with its right leg, stands to account in some for your command to stand Stand, Fergus O'Leary. I have never seen such a shambles of a palace in all my life. And you who disagree so vehemently with the divorce, <coughs> the divorce, <laughs> A divorce! Ah, a divorce! A divorce is the German word, is it? Divorce. Uh, we fight in divorce today. We recognize that today we have the great Henry V with us. Henry, would you like to say a few words? No. Henry is uh, silent today. Henry is on the pictures on the net. We can read it all on the net, yes. Henry, what are you doing, my lad? And you, you're, you're hurt. It is like a tea cozy, no? Henry VIII was one day sat in the palace, working out how he could forge the books of the Roman Catholic faith. But by the time the printing press came out, they had not two scripts of the original Roman Catholic faith to write on a blackboard. Uh, the truth about the history of the Tudor monarchy from its inception to its ultimate and utter disaster. You would need to read, my friends, about the Duck of Windsor. The Duck of Windsor. My dear boy, I would not be found dead servicing his ruddy English car. But did you know anything about the history of Austin? Did you know what the real pride of Jane Austen was in terms of a literature? A literature. Oh, a literature. And the pride and the prejudice and the passion of being earnest. Oh, no, 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 no. No, this Irish, this Irish was, uh, this was, this was, uh, I think, uh, George Barnett Shaw, was it, uh, in person, uh, Oh, no, no, because he said that was just a big, 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 No, big, big, no. Oh, no, sir. <coughs> this is a palace, a representative right hall. They understand what is meant by the horse.
right? The blue honor of the Poet Laureate. Her legs were like the sea. <laughs> kind of fool am I? Her shoes, they were by, as it were, the brand uh, that was greater and uh, some Versace to fall to a damn fool, a sedan, a Montebello. There was a time We let the bow break. We let the heartaches just to see and you only have to look at Fergus there, the green monster, who tell you these stories about this, this, this ridiculous voice, voice, the voice as you wrote them or the voice as Germany wrote them. And we have Lederick von Steenway, I'm unhappy today. He spent his time in Damau working out how to find the place where it's going to be the Wellington of Waterloo. But by the time, I mean, you have to come, you couldn't write it. You could not write how the troops of the Wellington, how, the, how, how they mustered against the great Napoleon. Yeah, yeah, and they tell you, oh yeah, Blucher was late in coming. Oh yeah, Blucher, Blucher was late in coming. Yeah, it is like, it is like saying, Rudolf Valentino never had a love affair. And that when he did, he was so inexperienced, as they tell you about King Edward VIII, was it? who was in this affair the young lady in Paris in approximately 1919, 18, which was doing the war, the war in France. So was they so inexperienced, he was late in coming. Yes, so we got all these letters, we got all the, we had some letters, we had some questions, and I have to tell you, I, I, I have a dumb That for this pain for tomorrow I'll be your lover kind tomorrow than for today What kind of fool am I never fell in love Just 
wonderful by the sincerity and the love which you have is obviously given your own. It, uh, it, I, I am amazed that you even had it so long that you want to play to them if you want to sell it and then you can buy mine. Yeah, you can buy mine but you will not get my piano so easily as if you go to China shop and uh, try the looking beyond the books of my fair lady. There she was going to be writing to this gentleman who was to some extent a hideaway. And this name, his name was a, a, a tyranny itself. And she writes to him, Dear Mr. Tyranny itself, how can I fall in love? So Mr. Tyranny itself, he writes back to her, Tyranny lover, Miss, I am already in love with you. So you want to find two destiny as a speaker. Speak! <laughs> oh, forever hold thy peace. Thy destiny uh, has arrived. And these things, my dear beloved Empress, you are immortalized by the aria, did you know, El, El Cantatus Us? El Cantatus Us? El Incubatus Us? Or El Crematorium Us? For the boss, we do not talk about the boss! Fergus, come back, will you? All is forgiven, Fergus. Just leave the history books behind, will you? We don't need the burgers in this class. Tear them up. They are horrible. They are batches of lies and worse. They are not representative of anything of my fair lady. They are scarcely any semblance of even Pygmalion. And the importance of being earnest or pride is prejudice to such great degree. I would rather have no pride in even the crown jewel, if I were you. And who is the crown jewel? The crown jewel is who do you expect other than the great Dane? The great Dane we have here, who is the wife of his majesty, King James I of England and King James VI of Scotland. You think, do you, that you can create Scotland as a unique country? And uh, we have free place. If you want, you look at Scotland. It is impressive. Impressive, yes. So I, 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 I get you to sing for me, Sing of Scotland. Young lady, you write to Mr. Tyranny. You want to be famous singer. I can make you famous singer. You want me, you want me to help teach you that, right? Yes, I think it is, yes. So you write, you have written to Mr. Rex, Mr. Tyranny itself, and I, I can assure you, I can help you to sing, if you will give me the story of Five Nights of the King. Uh, but these are nights, you understand, they are N-I-G-H-T-F, which is the thing that comes after the day. You understand the day? So, this is long story view, but you want a Battle of Agincourt from the view of King Henry V, which is totally different to the view of the French monarchy, who had a different point of view. So, that is the end of our introduction to this, which is speaking today for the half of Poland, or better known as Agincourt, you never had it, the House of Parliament. It uh, just is already coming late. Hey! His Majesty! Hello, viewer. Today we are going to talk about policy. Whoa, what is that? What is that? 
worthy of election. Dream. The dream of, all in. of making artists great. This is going to encroach on some of the more cosmopolitan aspects of hereditary immigration. That to be genuine if you are an immigrant is questionably whether you are truly Syrian or half Syrian or truly British or half British or or a true American or in fact half Red Indian. Indeed, we had in 1989 the war in Berlin removed. This did create a sense of freedom which was, as it was being torn down, to some degree representing something of the representation of the monster which rears its ugly head in the uh, faint uh, hallucination or hallucinatory effect that it is actually being set free when it is actually tearing down the fences to actually be able to stay there in the cage, in the zoo that on a visit to the zoo once in a place which shall be nameless I was quite intimidated when people stood around looking at her wondering what she was doing there I mean, I am one of the most egalitarian socialists who ever set foot on the concert stage. That if I was ever going to play for the Lord Mayor of... There are those people who from the mouths of babes of sucking call themselves lecturers. And there are those people who are truly gods. But there are those who would tell you that Edward I, who around 1265 was working in the Shard and creating the Shard and calling representations by barons and how esteemed it was in English monarchy that the state of the enterprise of Heredity was going to be established, uh, but from this stinking bog comes Edward I and Edward III, that you cannot credit, can you, human nature, that by the time you get to Agincourt, that it is said by lecturers, isn't it, it is said by lecturers that Agincourt achieved the path of human victory for the British system. And yet, if you really study it, what did it achieve in terms of the aims of the French throne? It achieved absolutely nothing. What did it achieve for freedom for Henry V, who, it is claimed by lecturers, had, a, had an eternal right to the throne of England? What did it achieve? It achieved that he would be sent back to England, kicking and screaming in effect, because he had no claim over France, and the reason he didn't in political circles was because of the horror and the massacre of Agincourt. We would expect, we would expect the, the graciousness to be able to grant the King of Beasts to be able to, at least, have it then. I mean, does it take a parliament to try and make a policy which is to be upheld and to be honoured and revered? I think it takes a band of fools. You wouldn't need to even have the name. We let the hard in. I'm sorry now. I'm sorry. 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 I
table to the air. Had it been beyond the pages of Parliament, had it been beyond the sands of the desert, who truly knows rain? Beyond the forces of which Lawrence was fighting, Lawrence of Arabia, that wanted to set the place free. Who would? And now that's why I'm called by the annihilation of the which is threatening to the next animal in the where Bran is dimension is as big as the soldier. This lion, which does not have a place to go, which once torn down its path, has the proletariat chasing it. I'm an astonished heart, but as much as it is wasted by all, it's ignorant. <laughs> Not knowing whether they are the That's rebels, the civil defense, or the old emperor of the Turkish Ottoman Empire. They live by another name. Yet never so much, my friend. I know why I'm not even a gentleman. Now, you had already overthrown Mussolini by, what, it 1944 or 45? ...to know who you really are. Or you had succeeded, you thought, you thought, in the election of a new conservative government. This year, this time compared to last year, it is alleged, isn't it, and not proven, but there is some degree of sentiment that says that the figures are not true, that suggests that the new number of students selected to university is in the increase of some 3% compared to this time last year. Now, uh, call me old-fashioned. If I was going to perform a piece of mine on the piano, and for instance, if I was a remover, which uh, certainly I have in my time achieved great heights in being able to show Les Dawson that his realm of great excellence was superior to those of Myra, My, Myra Limpany, who you remember Ted Heath was very much in awe of, that when asked to conduct the National Youth Orchestra in its rehearsals, Mr Heath said, I am only too delighted to support the Jewish refugees and, and conducted Brahms to some degree, I must confess, of greater excellence than Brahms himself probably achieved in his own lifetime. But that doesn't say much, viewers, about the plight of the King of Beasts or the exhumation of the Emperors. We hear so much, don't we, about what happened to the bones of Richard III. We hear so much about what happened to Hitler and how he got there and what happened to the six children of Joseph Goebbels. Indeed, what happened to the six children of Joseph Goebbels was not necessarily achieved by its own family. But we look at the path of the piano from the time 
when Bartholomew Foy had invented this rather neat looking machine, I quite like it. Some of those out there, um, I like them, and the way you played them. It says to me that the Chinese have not quite got the art of composition. Now, Yamaha has for many years been the improvised, shall we say, Chinese version of Il Pianoforte, designed in Tuscany, Italy. If we look back at the works of the great Giacomo Puccini, you will see that, for instance, uh, if you exclude Madame Butterfly, you could find that Puccini had in fact no love of women at all. In fact, to study some of the works of Mozart, I often wonder if his intention to marry Constanza Weber was in fact thwarted in some, uh, shown by his dislike for the low tones of the general baritone, such as one gets from his achievement. What achievement is that which is visit to Britain between, was it 1763 and 1765, achieved when the palaces closed their doors to the bird catcher's song. Now, there's a lovely thing, that when you look at Il Carnator A in the great beautiful man, which Mozart Amadeus wrote for his future wife, you don't wonder, really, do you, how a composer dies in poverty. But I realise, and you will realise, at great pain or loss, if you do not accept the truth, viewer, that by far the better performers, more often than not, are the women on eBay, such as us, who fought and fought and fight for conscious liberation of the female gender at the expense even, if it comes to it, of not being able to play Brahms in the way that Brahms himself would have played it. But I am very often reduced to sobs of great sympathy, what the French call sympathique which sees some of those gentlemen on eBay play the piano forte and render to you the compositions which they have written. There is one which I cannot remember its name of, but I can remember the tune very well. There is another which is called Goodbye Yellow Brick Road, which I can remember the title of, but I can't frankly remember the melody at all. And I am reminded that the Yellow Brick Road, which was the one that was taken by Hermann Goering in one of his German cars, was later transformed. The policy. The policy we have today to, to free the country, the world of slavery, the elects world of slavery, the elects Brahms to be created by a conductor who is clearly a gentleman that has his pain and sorrow. What kind of way we will there be?
no more again. Ever so much less tonight.
and, and, and composers who herald by goodbye yellow brick road. We assume that yellow is nothing to do with being Chinese. We assume that goodbye yellow brick road was the road, for instance, of King Charles I or James I of England and the Sixth of Scotland, who, who gave over the throne in 1625 to, as you know, King Charles I. So we are here today to talk about policy and how Cromwell made this country great, despite after dying in 1658, digging up his bones from Westminster Abbey, where they had been laid in sacredness and reburied in Tyburn. Tyburn. At the end of the day, the politics of power is fought and won, not on the beaches, which was taught as Sir Winston Churchill once expired by the election of the Labour Party after the First Second World War. But the politics of power, isn't it, is fought by the way you speak, the way you play, and the way you polish the shoes of the proletariat. Now we don't talk about the proletariat. This proletariat shoe is actually a size is it a size 900 or a size in European EU terms of 420? Because in this shoe, it is not a size 9 and it's not a 42, it is a living dinosaur. Now, I ask you, viewer, I have been asked by the powers that be to select for you the ethics of delivery, the ethics of no additional charges, the ethics of, of there will be no surcharges placed on your cost to buy. Those ethics we carry out, we expedite, and where we can't expedite them, we will always ask another person who is offering to deliver the items to you of their own to reduce the prices so that they don't actually charge you for delivery. Now, we're not allowed to say that we offer you free delivery because we are not allowed to give you or charge you for anything extra. So we can't say we are charging you for selling this free item. But the powers that be have suggested to us that if we were to offer you free delivery, we would in fact be saying, in effect, that we have hidden the charges to you. We have hidden the charges. So what we have is a dinosaur in the size 420 shoes, telling us that it doesn't want us to hide anything. It wants us to start charging you, but to say that there are no additional charges. So we have submitted to this dinosaur, which we don't like the name quite as proletariat, so we have called the dinosaur Fergus. Fergus is chuffed. Fergus is quite happy, torn down its bars. It knows that it is free. It doesn't need to go anywhere. It doesn't need to do anything. And this has amounted, we are led to believe, by the new parties that are planning the election, that has achieved another 3% of excellence going towards the yellow brick road the new yellow brick road with the new national anthem. Oh, I must tell you about that later, viewer. I wrote it for the saddle as well. Cheers for now. Bye. Fergus is quite happy, torn down its bars. It knows that it is free. It doesn't need to go anywhere. So we have called the dinosaur Fergus. And this has amounted, we are Fergus. to believe, by the new parties it's that are planning the election. Fergus is quite it happy, happy torn down its bars. It knows that excellent. it is free. It doesn't need to go anywhere. The yellow brick road. It doesn't need to do anything. The new yellow brick road. And this road. has new amounted. We oh, are I must tell you about that later, viewer. I wrote it for the saddle as well. Cheers for now. Bye.